on this week's weekly video fishing forecast we have the latest from the dreamboat contest i go around the map and i let you know what i'm hearing and our correspondents check in from around the island or here at the fisherman.com the fishing news is sponsored by these fine partners It's Thursday, May 18, 2023, and this week's Digital Edition, New England editor Dave Anderson has a great read on what you need to know about poppers. Our own Mike Dean writes about back bay fishing on the South Shore. Not a game fish for sure, but the candy of the bay is the scallop, and Bob Mickelson has a great read on these shellfish. These and all other great articles in the current Digital Edition. Another good reason to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine is you are automatically entered into our Dreamboat Contest and your chance to win a center console Steigercraft powered by Yamaha. 30 bucks gets you 12 glossy issues and all the digital issues sent to your inbox. Best deal on the water. Now let's get to the 2023 Dreamboat Challenge update. It's been a week fish bonanza in the Dreamboat this week, with eight of the ten spots being filled over the past seven days. Connecticut is putting out some fish, but Long Island is dominating the top tide runners entered this week. And they are an 8.10 pounder landed by Kyle Krause of Cutchhog, New York, an 8.36 pounder bested by John Beck of Wantaw, New York. And the first place fish so far belongs to Kenneth Fay of North Babylon, New York, with his 8.4 pounder. The other important weak fish was the 6.25 pounder logged in by Eddie Terrabilly, good enough for ninth place and two points towards his leading tally. We also have a new Sea Robin leader at 3.2 pounds caught by Eric Moss of North Babylon, New York, and Eddie Terrabili also entered the fourth place bird this week at 2.38 pounds and good enough for seven points. And Sean Farham hit the bird board as well with a 2.97 pounder holding down third place and eight points. Sean Farham also entered the second place bluefish at 11.85 pounds which earned him nine points it's a battle between sean and eddie for the top spot eddie leads the tournament with 19 points but sean is nipping at his heels with 17. tune in next week to see these two duke it out or maybe you could be the one to knock them down or wrong this week's wild card showcase is for the eighth place bluefish position if you end up on the leaderboard in that position you will win a psionics night wave Night Wave is the ultra low light marine camera that allows boaters to easily spot obstacles and debris in the dark without bright lights or expensive thermal cameras. Navigate safely and maximize time on the water with Psionics. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steiger Craft Center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Also keep in mind, June 3rd is the All-Pro Fishing Tournament and Fair at Surfside 3 Marina in Lindenhurst. There will be live music, vendors, games, and food for the weigh-in. Right after that, on June 9th is the Manhattan Cup out of Liberty Landing in New Jersey. And on the 10th is the South Shore Invitational Charity Fishing Tournament benefiting Catholic Health Good Samaritan Hospital. That's located at Robert Moses Marina. To get the details on all these events, visit thefisherman.com slash events. Now let's head around the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing. Basic action on all species was pretty good uh, this week on the western south shore bays. Most bass are still in the bay and they're responding to artificials such as bass assassins and albino shads. Along with the bridges, the bass will respond to clams as well. Fluke are providing decent action in the bay also. They're feeding on grass shrimp, so downsize on your bucktails, teasers, and gulps as a tip. 
The good news is the increase in weak fish action. Fish to 25 inches were taken by Ocean Beach and the Blue Water Tower. Readily, they readily are responding to bass assassins and small shads in the albino color and the pink. Centrally, weak fish action was good along the inside holes on the south side of the bay. Fluking was a bit tough with the west winds, but fish were picked away again near the Robert Moses Bridge, the Narrows, and Mauritius Bay. Bass were following the bunker inside the Great South Bay into the creeks, and bluefish were still roaming around the bay, feeding on bunker pods off the Patchogue, Blue Point, and Sayville areas. Out East Peconic Bay was alive with porgies over 4 pounds, weak fish to 10, and with catches of over 50 fish. Stripers and bluefish were also inside the bay being caught on live bunker, bucktails, and top water lures. Shinnecock Bay was seeing a good run of bluefish near the canal and also inside the inlet with some larger ones up to 15 pounds. West of the Ponquag Bridge did have a decent fluke bite. Out in Montauk, the fluking was off to a slower start, but a few keepers were caught right off the point. Excellent bass and bluefish action made up for the reports out that way this week with stripers up to 30 pounds and bluefish into the teens. All the fish were caught off the point in the rips. The North Shore is also seeing an excellent porgy bite in most areas and a nice bonus is all the weak fish mixed in with them. Surf action has been hot all over the major South Shore inlets with bass up to 30 pounds on the night tides and bluefish during the day taking bucktails, poppers and tins. Some of the East End Creeks are still producing a nice amount of weak fish up to 8 pounds in Peconic Bay and Shinnecock. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen has this weekend's weather rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that uh, weekend forecast, see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite apps, uh, weather tools, whatever you got, websites. This is just a general heads-up, general overview for the upcoming weekend, just to give you an idea of what's happening. So it's going to be a mixed weekend, changing weather this weekend. Water temps, 50s to near 60. It was kind of a cool week, so it didn't warm up too much. A lot of easterly swells, southeast swells coming in. I think Saturday is not going to be very windy, but there will be some rain in the area, and there'll be a little bit of a build of 4 to 8s by evening and at night mainly offshore and then that kind of goes away with more of a northwest breeze with the front coming in as it flattens out sunday midday afternoon but it will be gusty sunday so again it's a little bit of a pick here on saturday there is some rain the winds are generally southeast to east going calm a bit but then again there will be raining a bit especially eastern long island and then the winds shift northwest by uh, saturday night going into sunday you know a sunnier day on sunday but a little bit gusty a little bit breezy but uh, it will be a little nicer there, maybe late in the day. The seas sit down quite a bit. New moon now. We've got North Shore high tides midday. South Shore about 8, 9 a.m. 60s most of the day on Saturday with some of the clouds. 70s a little milder on Sunday. Let's check the uh, the Guru. A little different site here. You can see again there's Saturday. Not a lot of wind. A little variable breeze. But there'll be uh, some waves building with some swells late in the day. There's the front right there coming right through uh, Saturday night. And Sunday it's a hard northwest early. But you know a little gap middle of the day where it may be okay. But uh, probably a small craft up with some 3 to 5 foot waves there on Sunday. So again a little bit of a mixed weekend. Check those apps as we get close to the weekend. Be safe as always. Enjoy. Catch them up. Matt, back to you. Now we'll check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings from Montauk. Definitely starting to kick in. Uh, the full fishing season's coming about. No problem here. Um, plenty of striped bass out in the rips. Diamond jigs, trolling, flies, light tackle, you name it, man. And there are also bit, plenty of uh, gator bluefish here in Montauk as well. We're finally catching up to everybody up island who's been doing really well so far this year. Um, the Viking Five Star, they had a really good um, Gulf of Maine trip. They caught a bunch of different really deep water species. One highlight was a halibut. Um, half day boats going. Um, these guys are doing good on porgies and fluke. You know, the fluke's still kind of just starting to get going but it's doing really well considering the water temperature is still about 58 degrees so things are definitely going to improve um mike dean he's got the manhattan cup coming up here at the beginning of june unfortunately i'm not going to be able to make that this year due to some family obligations but that's a great tournament that um if you can you should get involved in it's to help veterans and i highly recommend you checking that out otherwise uh the weekend's looking Nah, kind of rainy, but I'm sure it's going to be fishable, so get out there and catch them up. Thank you, Matt. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. Report this week out of Sag Harbor. 
Uh, weak fish still going super strong. People are getting on bait, jigs, uh, really throughout the Peconic, so that's super exciting. Uh, and porgies just keep on getting bigger and bigger, so that's also a great sign. On the striped bass front, uh, that continues to get better and better. Hearing great reports out of Peconic as well as Montauk really starting to pop off. Uh, we're seeing, you know, blitzes in and around the lighthouse. Uh, so that's, you know, obviously a great sign for, for things to come. Thanks, Matt. So as Will said, um, you know, the porgy bite, weak fish bite's been really good. Uh, the bluefish bite has been fantastic in shore. I know not always everyone's target species, but I think they put up a great fight, especially on like tackle. We love going for them. Um, so that's been really strong. Finally, some hearing of some tuna bites as well further offshore. So guys, that's a couple weeks ahead of schedule. So we're really excited. Hope that means a great season to come. Back to you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, fishing's still going pretty good in between Shinnecock and Mariches. The blue bite is still on. They're getting a little bit smaller. There's still some nice gorillas mixed in. They're spread out a little bit to a lot of other areas. Basically, the whole bay from Great South Bay uh, all the way to Heady Creek has has fish on fly, on light tackle, on poppers, just uh, the whole bit. There are some striped bass mixed in, not as great a bite as we had had before the bluefish arrived, but they are there. Uh, ocean fishing, not a whole lot going on, uh, but I would think we're going to start to see some bigger bass on bunker pod out in the ocean, so that's encouraging. Been a bit of a bluefin bite out in the Hudson Canyon. I uh, heard some reports from out there, so uh, for guys that have a boat that's able to handle that kind of trip, or a friend with a boat that can handle that type of trip, or a good charter captain, uh, touch base with them. It sounds like there's uh, something going on or a bite that typically might last a, a week or two. Um, weak fish have been around. I know the Peconics are doing <clears throat> really well. I've heard of some fish at night in some of the, the back bays and, uh, you know, those typical spots. I haven't been really able to target them yet, but um, really hope to get on them soon. Uh, you can check out my article, Three for One on the Bucktail, that's targeting bluefish, stripers, and weak fish on a bucktail this time of year. And uh, I'm really excited to get at them. I just gotten, you know, obviously pink is one of the uh, colors that people typically use. This is uh, Mugging Them Up Bucktails, uh, brand new, just got in the mail. Uh, this, I believe, is one and a quarter ounce. So hopefully this is going to be the one that's going to get me uh, one of those nice big unicorns, uh, you know, that I'll have to share with you in the next couple of reports. Friday, June 9th, Manhattan Cup. We have we have room for individual anglers, teams, corporate sponsors. We are getting down to kind of like the, the home stretch here of uh, signing people up and getting everything together. So please reach out to me, manhattancup.com. Steigercraft has generally decided to um, sponsor the Warrior Division, which includes the Chris Raguso Award. Chris was killed in action with his... Um, Unit Jolly 51 of the 106 Rescue Wing at Kabretsky Airport. So it's a really nice connection for Chris being a Long Island guy, his dad being a writer for the Fisherman, uh, specializing in electronics and the reviews of that. And Steiger being such a prominent name in the boating industry and based here on Long Island. It's just a really, really cool thing. So we're very grateful to Steiger for that and uh, and looking forward to seeing them and you on June 9th. So hit me up for any details. Let me know what you thought of the article if you check it out. And uh let us know how you did. Leave a comment below. All right, I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have the Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. Wow, it's so cool to be back local again. Florida was a great fun time, but, uh, you know, it's always great to come back to my hometown roots and just chill out. And the fishing is dynamic right now. We've got all types of striped bass sizes. We've got fluke on the beach, fluke on the boat, uh, weak fish in the bay. Um, porgies moved in, porgies in the bay, porgies on the outside, porgies on the boats. There's plenty to do for everybody. You know, pipe and plovers are out there right now, so there's a lot of different closures going on. Um, just uh, check out for your local spots and see what access is available. But uh, as we come on to Memorial Day weekend, we're going to be opening our second shop coming up soon, and that's going to be great news. We can't wait to get out there and really help more people spread the Cow Harbor joy. And um, until next week, I bid you all peace and tight lines. Let's check in with Captree Bait and Tackle and Fuel with Brendan Rutigliano. Captree's actually been on fire lately. Uh, fluke up to seven pounds, weak fish 6.6, .6. bay blues up to giant blues, uh, those gorilla nice size ones from out east, striped bass, uh, it, pretty much everything you can catch on the piers lately uh beach boats jetties you, you're doing pretty well i would honestly i would say going up here it's awesome and you don't have to walk that far 
<laughs> uh, Capture Fleet is also doing great. Bay Blues, they've been into this load of fish in the bay. Uh, awesome timing, and it's just, uh, there's literally pictures of like 40 or 50 blues for the boat, which is easy, you know. Uh, fluke, weak fish, and uh, even one of the boats is going out for tile fish. So we'll see you guys out there and uh, capture you out. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, Captain Al here, Fire Island Report. Uh, I can't tell you how good it is. Bass, blues, and weak fish, they're all over. A uh, lot of striped bass on clam chum, on live bait, on plugs, you name it. Big bluefish in the back bay, three, four feet of water, anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds, light tackle, top water, working great. And weak fish, Ocean Beach, West Channel, and now I heard a few taken by Hexa State. I had fish up to eight pounds. One day this week I had an eight, a seven, and a five with a group going out, a bunch of buddies. And uh, I tell you, the fishing is really excellent right now. So Fire Island is alive. Uh, offshore, I haven't heard much news there yet, but we'll see that should be happening pretty soon. Weather for this weekend looks halfway decent. Saturday might be a little tough, but it should be good. And the fishing is excellent. So talk to you next week, Matt. We have Captain Vince also on the Great South Bay with this report, Vince. Hey Matt, I've got a red hot report out of Fire Island this week. The stripers are here, they're in the surf, they're around the bridges, they're over the shoals, they're in the back bay. Uh, the weak fish, crazy good right now. We're talking weak fish up to 26 inches, anywhere from Ocean Beach to Point of Woods in that area. And if you want to travel a little bit more, they got them in the Patchog area as well. Good fishing, fluke. Fluke is getting hot. To my surprise, it's usually a little slower, but they're here, and some keepers are being taken. Again, back to that same old area, you know, the State Channel, Babylon Cut, Lynnhurst Cut, Amityville Cut. Work it slow. Look for all the uh, wash-offs off the marshes, and you'll get on the fluke. Hey, just a reminder, June 3rd is the All-Pro Tournament and Fair. Crazy good. More information about that is at allpronational.com. Matt. Back to you. From Jones Beach Bait and Tackle, Brendan Rutigliano is back with reports from the West. And for the Jones Beach side of things, we got large dogfish coming off the pier. Blowfish, bluefish, fluke, and striped bass all being caught on the Jones Beach Field 10 piers. Uh, local boats are ca catching striped bass, fluke, bluefish. We've been doing really well, uh, pretty much just in everything. And uh, we've actually been getting some small porgies as well. The shop will be open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this week, and then open daily after the 26th. Good luck, guys. Here are the April standings for the Long Island Rod Company High School Fishing League. There's plenty of time to start a new club. You don't need the school's permission or anything. Uh, you can contact us on Instagram for more information. Um, basically, all you need to do is catch fish, and it goes by points. Every full pound is one point towards your club. Uh, so. Port Jeff is actually in the lead. Babylon is in second with just behind by a few points. And then we have Centermariches, Ward Melville, and Belmore in third through fifth. Those are all super close. Plenty of time to get fish. Every month is going to get counted. And then in November it ends. And then we'll do a final count for the top three schools in every position. Um, it's anyone's game. You can use hashtag L-I-R-C-H-S-F-L to keep up with the standings. Thanks, guys. We have our Fly and Freshwater Report with Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, here I am. I'm trying to get a little, a little fishy while I still have time. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a little windy out here tonight, but uh, I think I could uh, work it out and see what happens. I haven't been able to get out too much because uh, my uh, wife has a, a few chores for me to do. She says I'm fishing too much. I, don't, I disagree with her on that. But uh, as far as the fishing goes, well, the freshwater scene is really coming alive. Uh, we're doing a real, I mean, everybody's doing really well in the, uh, in the, in the Connect Quad, uh, Caleb Smith. Carmage River, the, the Carls River, all the rivers upstate. The uh, Housatonic is at its normal flow. It's still high, but this is normal. So you fish the edges. 
and uh, plenty of bug life coming off. Plenty. Um, salt water, I've been hearing really good things about the weak fish. Some really nice weak fish being caught in the back bays. Uh, surprisingly, I've been also hearing Jamaica Bay is really doing well uh, on the fly rod. So, I mean, we have a lot of options. Uh, the, but I can guarantee you're not going to catch fish if you stay at home. Now, we are doing trips. We do have a trip to uh, Blind, uh, I'm sorry, to the Peconic River that's coming Monday. If you'd like to join us, just go to riverbayoutfitters.com, check out the trips you might want to do, and uh, give me a call. And uh, we'll get you out there. Until next week, tight lines, everybody. Let's check in with Chris Landry. Thanks, Matt. Well, congratulations to Rockfish Charters for participating, donating their time, and winning the New York Classic. It's uh, to benefit the anti-poverty organization Global Citizen. My boy Elliot Resnick, a friend for over 20 years, was on the board, helped put that team together. They won it by uh, catching a 47-inch striper reeled in by Nick Kalmachi. Um, Andrew McKinnis was on board. Fizo uh, was on board. So congratulations to them. They won the tournament. This was last Thursday. They raised over six figures to help anti-poverty causes with Global Citizen. And in other news, June 9th is the Manhattan Cup. I'm really looking forward to participating in that. We're going to be taking veterans out fishing June 9th. So sign up for that if you want to donate your boat to help take out veterans. On June 24th, Fishing the Atlantic A team is putting together a charter on the Gypsy Charters, June 24th. So check out Fishing the Atlantic Instagram and sign up for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of uh, good people, big crew will be out there on Gypsy Charters June 24th. All right, so fishing is strong. Get out there, get tight. Thank you, and back to you, Matt. Let's check it with David Rogers. Dave. Thanks, Matt. This past week in the Western Sound has been a week of giants. There are big fish to be caught, and not just on bunker chunks or live bunker, but on top water lures as well. This photo was sent to us from Joe Genta on Instagram. Him and his buddy Andrew of Tactical Bassin caught this massive 51 pound, 51 and a half inch striper on a top water lure. The lure that got it done was a dock spook, and Joe was giving the spook a walk the dog action. It's always impressive to land a striper that's 50 pounds, but it's even more impressive when it was done on a topwater lure. The stripers have been biting well during the morning hours, so a morning trip could be a good choice if you want to bend a rod. When it comes to fluke and porgy, both fish are in the bays, but not in large numbers. I've been getting reports of keeper fluke being pulled up along the Western Sound bays, and I'm hopeful that the fluke fishing will pick up even more in the coming days. Well, that's all I got for this week's report, and as always guys, make sure to check out Funky Fishing on YouTube to get a more detailed look into what's biting around the island. Stay groovy everyone, and back to you Matt. Raul Ortiz, the Urban Angler, has this report from around the city. Hey guys, Raul Ortiz here, the Urban Angler, with my report for the week. As you know, right now, you know, fishing is red hot all around the city, with fish close to 50 pounds being caught. Upstate New York is hot. And same situation, you have fish probably close to 50 pounds being caught up there. Uh, a lot in the 30 pound class are being caught, but really big, nice, healthy looking fish are being caught. The South and North Shore beaches are producing some nice stripers as well. And as you know, the blue fish are in town and they made their way into the back of the bays too. Um, a lot of fish are being caught on plastics, SP minnows, swatters, hydro minnows, plastics, um, anything you like to throw, just be confident with what you're throwing and uh, you should be able to hook up with something, you know, try to follow the tides. Um, if you like to follow moon phases and stuff like that, um, that that's good too. But um, the time is now guys, you, you probably got another month or so of this and uh, fish are going to keep continuing to go out east. Uh, we have some nice weather coming up and uh these fish are going to be coming out the hudson soon and just on the prowl eating everything they can and fattening up and then continue their their route up uh the the, the northeast coast 
Anyway, um, big shout out to Beast River Fishing on that uh, 47 pounder this uh, week that passed. Uh, that was a big monster. Uh, congratulations, buddy. And um, to all my other friends um, that have been catching as well and sharing information and pictures with me, thank you. And um, tight lines, everybody. Catch them up. Back to you, Matt. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. Thanks, Tim, and Matt Hopewell as well. Well, guys, Mike Sentry here from Anglers of Legend Sportfish. Well, what can I say? Look, the striped bass, they're getting bigger by the day. So a lot of guys have been going out there doing the same exact thing, trolling the live eels, live landing bunker. I think they're doing a great job. Check out uh, my friend Justin Campbell, Dark Horse. He's been putting a good beat down on the uh, Jumbo Blues and Stripers. Uh, another uh, favorite fish of the Northeast is the Fluke. And uh, here is Sea Tiger Charters, I believe out of Keyport. So they're putting a good beat down on Fluke. Right around now to about late May to June is probably one of the most um, important times for fluking. It's where you're really gonna be able to get a really nice doormat, believe it or not. I remember last year a guy up in uh, the Hudson, uh, New York City Bay, he ended up hooking, I believe it was a 14.5 pound fluke using a live bunker right on the bottom three-way swivel. So now's the time, that was about early June. Uh, sea bass opened up today, so that's 10 fish per person. And the reports are coming in a little on the weak side. So I'll give it about a couple more weeks, see what happens with that. The weather and the wind hasn't been helping. Salt the clams is your tickets with that. Also, as the offshore season starts heating up and you know more people start heading out there, check the serial numbers and the uh, expiration dates on your life rafts. Make sure they're not expired, make sure they're in good shape. All your safety equipments, fire extinguishers, horn, air horns, ancillary equipments and stuff like that. Safety, medical equipment also on the boat. Even from shore, a good pliers, hook cutting pliers, stuff like that always comes in handy. Well, another thing real quick, the giant bluefin tuna season, uh, pretty much it's been three weeks. It was pretty good, a uh, few boated here and there. But um, like always, they disappear and come back later on. So um, stay tuned for that. So um, see what happens. But with that said, let me get out of here, guys. And uh, back to you, man. Lastly, we check in with Captain Ben Gilmore from Marina Pez Vela down in Costa Rica. Hey, guys, how's it going? This is Ben Gilmore down here in Costa Rica. Hope you're all doing well. So, yeah, guys, right now, offshore fishing, we had a really, really nice sailfish bite going on out there really close to our marina, just 15 miles the sailfish have been biting. A couple of days ago, I raised 18 sailfish, which was just an insane day. A couple of days later, 14 sailfish we raised. We've been doing quite a lot of fly fishing, so we're not catching that many fish, but only two days back, we released two sailfish on fly, which is an incredible result for our anglers. There's been a few blue marlin out there as well. Our fads, our fish aggregating devices are starting to crank up now. So most of those are 60 plus miles offshore, big, large sport fishers for three and four day liverboard trips. Read all about the Costa Rican fads, guys. The peak season is right now. So also we got a few Dorados out there. We got plenty of yellowfin tuna and the rooster fish bite has been really, really nice. We've caught 12 nice rooster fish in the past week aboard my boat. Guys, we'd love to see you down here this summer. Give us a call. Ben Gilmore, this is Jackpot Sport Fishing and back to you. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. Don't forget that this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcasts. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast and our other content. Looks like if you're gonna fish this weekend, you'll have to keep it to the protected bays as the ocean looks like it might be a little bit lumpy. So be safe out there and I will see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.